Hello, welcome back. We've been talking about transmission lines, and in this video we're going to look at the impedance anywhere on the line, which is different than what we've been doing. So the, the ratio of voltage to current anywhere on the line is the impedance at that point. So we've got a, you know, we've got some transmission line here, and if I look at this point, for example, there's going to be a voltage at that point, you know, relative down here, and there's going to be a current at that point. The, again, the voltage, um, uh, uh, the ratio of voltage to current there would be the impedance at that point. But this this impedance is not a constant across the line because if I if I look say over here, you know, you should understand that we have a wave now traveling. So this wave, this might be at the the peak of the wave, whereas this was the um, maybe the zero crossing of the wave. Um, so, you know, be, being that we have a, a, a gener in general, we have a wave going down this line uh, with, with a trans transmitting and a reflecting, then um, the impedance changes then at, at all these points on the line. Um, and so the impedance is a function also, you know, of the load impedance. At some point, this transmission line terminates at a load because um, because this load impedance affects the reflection right then that affects the impedance anywhere on the line now this concept is different from the characteristic impedance z0 which we were uh, we were talking about earlier this this is constant and is determined by the properties of the line, which we saw with the microstrip and the coaxial and the twin lead. We can we can calculate Z0 based on the materials uh, of the line, the permittivity and the permeability, and the geometry of the line. Okay, so this is different. This is the impedance at a certain point on the line. This is the impedance of the line itself. It's different. The Z0 was uh, the ratio, we define this as the ratio of the incident voltage to the incident current. Right? That's that's how we defined the characteristic impedance. So this this disregards reflections and this the impedance anywhere on the line, which we're going to talk about today, is um, is taking account the reflections. Okay, so that was that was all just the preamble, just to uh, to to get you to see that there's a difference between those two things. Now, if we're dealing with time harmonic waves, and remember we can write the voltage anywhere on the line as this. So again, we're going to take the reflection into account. Okay, and then correspondingly, the current anywhere on the line, in terms of the voltage, is this. Okay, so the impedance then, anywhere on the line, I'll just call that Z, would be the ratio of Vs to Is. So I can I can take um, v, uh, Z0 out of this thing and I can so I can write this as Z0 times we would have E to the minus J beta Z plus gamma E to the J beta Z divided by e to the minus j beta z minus gamma e to the j beta z like this again and then this is all being multiplied by z0 out in front and since gamma we showed was zl minus z0 over zl plus z0 I can substitute that in here that's going to be uh, quite a bit and um, 
And then if I simplify things a little bit, what I get is this. And I'll write this out. This is going to take me a little bit. But the z0 is still out in front, and I would have I can I can group these things in a way that I would have um, this quantity here minus, and then I would group. like this, divided by, and then group, so z0, and then another grouping, like this. Now, the reason I want to show that grouping is because uh, if you are up to to speed on your trig and, and maybe signals and systems, uh, you recognize in the parentheses, in this parentheses is a cosine of some sort, and in this uh, set of parentheses is a sine, and then in this set of parentheses is a cosine, and in this set of parentheses is a sine. And so we can indeed um, make that substitution, and then if we divide everything by a cosine, uh, what we f finally get then is a tangent. So we would have something like this. We'd have z0 out in front again and then times zl minus jz0 tangent of beta z over z0 minus jzl tangent of beta z. So where does the j come from? Well this thing in parentheses, this is 2j times the sine. This is 2j times the sine. This is 2 cosine. This is 2 cosine. Think about Euler's relation. So, so I've made that substitution, then I've divided everything by cosine, and uh, the 2's cancel, and so I'm left with this. Good. Now, we previously chose, uh, in a previous video, that is, uh, we previously chose the load to be at z equals zero. So let me let me just show that here. Let me highlight that here. So um, we have a transmission line, and then we've got a load we're calling zl, and we said that the transmission line is oriented in the positive z direction, and we said that this here is z equals zero lots of z's. And so in, in this case then the source um, would be over here somewhere, right? The, the generator, sometimes it's called the generator. I'll, I'll write vg for generator. And um, so this means then that we're always going to be, as being that this is z equals zero, we're always going to measure the impedance on the line for z less than zero, somewhere, somewhere on the line, right? z less than zero. And so let's just suppose we're going to measure the impedance at z equals minus l. Then the impedance uh, at this point, so the impedance on the line at this point would be, um, I, would t I would plug in minus l for z. So let me do that. So I plug in minus l for z. And I recognize that tangent is an odd function, so that would make this a positive and this a positive. Okay, and then I'll just emphasize that beta L are, are both in the tangent argument like this. So this is, the, this is what we would call the input impedance now. So if, a, if the generator Here's the generator. If the generator is a length L away from the load, this is the impedance, we're going to call that Z in, that the generator sees. And, and it incorporates ZL into it, right? We, because of the reflection and so forth. This is the total impedance that the generator sees, right? So uh, let's let, let me just draw a nicer picture just to emphasize this fact. So let us say that we have a generator like that, 
and maybe you know generators are not perfect either so we're gonna just be very general here and we're gonna say that the generator itself has impedance and we're gonna call that Z sub G then there's impedance on the line so we're gonna represent that like this long bar that's the characteristic impedance and then then th this thing is terminated with impedance ZL so here's our model of what's happening right and and our generator is right here right right when we connect to the line and so we're saying at at any point so maybe at this point right here actually uh, yeah so that's our point of measurement call this L right the impedance as seen at these terminals then a distance L away is given by this equation in the box and so the, our circuit can simplify to this ZG and then everything is lumped in together for Z in that's the total impedance at those terminals now sometimes it's useful to measure this this distance in units of wavelength lambda like on a circuit board a printed, printed circuit board you wouldn't do this for powering homes when the di when the length it could be kilometers um, now remember that from from trig that the tangent function is periodic with period pi not 2 pi pi so that means that for the tangent for the tangent of beta L that would be equal to the tangent of beta L plus some integer multiple of pi so since since beta is equal to 2 pi over L uh, excuse me 2 pi over lambda we know that the tangent then of 2 pi L over lambda must be equal to the tangent of 2 pi over lambda times L plus n pi, uh, n lambda over 2 so why is that well think about if I if I distribute this 2 pi over lambda in the twos would cancel the lambdas would cancel and I would have n pi so we would we're in a sense just adding n pi and we, we we already said that adding n pi does not change the tangent because it's periodic so therefore um, the input impedance is, uh, repeats then every pi over 2 along the line the input impedance repeats every pi over 2 along the line so um, let's recall now that the tangent of pi over 2 is infinity and let's look at what the impedance would be at L is equal to lambda over 4 so lambda over 4 away from our measurement okay in this case so we, we consult the equation in the box uh, actually let's let's rewrite it so we would have Z in equals Z 0 times Z L plus J Z 0 times the tangent of 2 pi over lambda times pi over 4 because we're considering a length of pi over 4 and beta is 2 pi over lambda over z0 plus j z l tangent of 2 pi over lambda times lambda over 4 like this now so something interesting happens here this is why we're considering this case of pi over 4 
length. Because pi over 2, the tangent of pi over 2 is infinity, then that's what we have here. You see that? Pi over 2, and that's what we have also above it. So this thing goes to infinity, this thing goes to infinity. So in that limit, then, what we see is that the input impedance uh, becomes, I've got z0 times z0, so z0 squared, and then I've just got a zl then. Everything else drops out because nothing else is going to infinity. So a distance pi, uh, a lambda over 4 away, I, my generator sees an input impedance given by this thing. So this is interesting, actually. Um, and you're going to see right now an application to this. Uh, this fact actually can be leveraged so, uh, for input matching or impedance matching at the input um, when the line is fixed. So, so let's say we have a line that 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 d currently does not match the load. What we can do is we can put a quarter wave transformer into the line. So let me just get some space here, and I want to demonstrate this very important application to you. So this would be a quarter wave transformer that we're going to look at. Okay, so let's say that we have a generator and we're going to say it's a perfect generator for right now um, it does not have a resistance or an impedance to it and here's our line so our line is characterized by this characteristic impedance and then there's you know the load impedance all right and we're gonna say currently now Z0 and ZL are not matched and if you remember from the previous video, we said that we should match them, or you know, we would like to match them, so that there are no reflections. What we can do is, you know, if we insist on this line, maybe the line is already, um, you know, part of our infrastructure, and um, and if we insist on this impedance, you know, so there's 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 no way that those two can match. What we can do is uh, we can leverage this fact up here and make a quarter wave transformer by inserting so here's our line a new line with impedance we'll say z0 prime and here is our load impedance okay so here's our new line And we're saying that our new line is going to be a quarter wavelength. Remember, the length has, has to be a quarter wavelength for this result to hold. All right, so let's see what the effect of inserting this line has on uh, the total impedance that the generator sees. Okay, the original line sees input impedance Uh, Z in, okay. Actually, we'll we'll write that here. So the the original line. So at this terminal, whenever the line ends, we see input impedance Z in. Okay, and so um, uh, actually, let me let me back up. Let's say that uh, here. This is what I want. This is Z in. This is this is the picture that I want to look at. We're going to say the original line sees this input impedance. So here, here's where the original line ends. And so it sees some impedance that is a function of the load impedance and the new line. So it sees this impedance Z in. Okay, so this, this Z in is serving as the load of the original line. So we can calculate the reflection coefficient. like this. Okay, but that Z in, according to our analysis over here, is uh, Z 
0 prime because that's that's the characteristic impedance of the new line squared over ZL. So see we have we have Z in is equal to Z 0 prime squared over ZL, right? Because it, it's a quarter wave away from the load. So now our reflection coefficient we can write as Z0 prime squared over ZL minus Z0 over Z0 prime squared over ZL plus Z0. So this is the reflection coefficient now taking into account both lines Z0 and Z0 prime as well as the load impedance ZL. So now, now there's something we can do actually. We can make this numerator zero so that we would have zero reflection. Nice. So we have zero, uh, Z0 prime squared over ZL then minus Z0 equals zero. And so to solve that then, we, we can solve that and we can decide how we're going to construct the new line. We're going to construct the new line to have a characteristic impedance. Remember the geometry and the materials affect the, the characteristic impedance. So that we're going to choose the new line or build the new line so that its characteristic impedance is this thing. We call that the geometric mean of Z0 and ZL. So doing so just to summarize here if we if we insert a new line that is a quarter wavelength um, you know maybe this is maybe this is a 60 hertz wave um, so we can find the we can find the wavelength and if we insert a line that is a quarter wavelength away from the load and we 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 choose the impedance of this new line to be this then what we have is zero reflection and remember that zero reflection is good for us that means everything is transmitted into the load that's pretty cool all right the next thing i want to mention then in the following video is how we can use what's called a smith chart to easily or conveniently calculate some of these things that we've been calculating by hand so let's take a look at a Smith chart. Thank you.